Polish off your dancing shoes. The A&T's basketball team is heading to the women's NIT. It's not the big dance, but still a well-deserved honor for the MEAC champs. Although the Aggies lost to Norfolk State in the semifinals of the MEAC tournament, they finished the regular season undefeated in conference play. Jason McMasters has their highlights from their final home game, an 86-52 victory over arch rival North Carolina Central. The Lady Aggies could pick no finer opponent to beat in seeking their perfect MEAC season than their arch rivals, the Eagles of North Carolina Central. We pick up action in the second quarter with the Aggies on top, 21-13, C.C. Foy and Cindy McRae worked a perfect little give and go for the easy Foy bucket. Micaiah Wilson gets the Aggie fast break started with a long pass to a streaky McRae for another layup and a 26-13 lead. Playing in her last game in Corbett, Charmise Taylor with a pretty spin move in the lane plus the foul. C.C. McCoy swipes the ball at midcourt and passes ahead to Telly Bostic for another easy layup. Bostic wound up finishing with 11 points on the night. And right before the half, again, it's Foy on the inside off the dish from Lay Hill. And the route was on as the Aggies took a 41-19 lead and to halftime. To the second half we go, and it was all about that defense. As Suge LaSears and Lay Hill team up for the block, Micaiah Wilson gets the break started and breaks some ankles before dishing to Cynthia McRae for a short baseline jumper. C.C. Foy does it herself from the left side with a driving layup. Wilson would then find Foy for another drive, but this time she drops it off to the Sears for the easy lay-in. Once again, Wilson leading the break for the Aggies as she finds McCray in the corner for the three ball, plus the foul, as her teammates check on her to see if she's okay. Off the inbounds, Wilson drives left and a pretty dish to a wide open lay hill underneath for another easy deuce. Wilson would finish with a team high seven assists on the night. And Miss Wilson says she wants in on some of this action too as she gets the left handed shot to go in traffic. Foy again off the left side finds Tyler for the short jumper. And Hill just bullies the ball away from Central with this block. And again, the Aggies are off and running. Bostic to Foy to Tyler for her 10th point on the night and a 66-41 lead heading into the fourth quarter. Bostic this time finds Cynthia McRae for another Aggie bucket. McRae would finish with 16 on the night. Once again, Foy just debos the ball right out of the Eagles' hands and she'll end up getting it back for two. Hill finds LaSears on the inside for the last of her nine points. But it was C.C. Foy who led all Aggie scorers with 17 on the night as the Aggies finished the season in style and take down NC Central 86-52. And now it's on to Harrisonburg, Virginia, where a and will face James Madison in the first round of the women's NIT. In Corbett Sports Arena, Jason McMasters, Aggie News and Views. The Aggie men brought out the brooms for a sweep of Central on March 7th, giving the Aggies sole possession of second place in the MEAC. Jason McMaster shot highlights and reports on the men's game also. The students may have been off, but the Aggies were absolutely on as Ty Lyons drops to the hoop to get the Aggies started early. A little defense here. Eve Silla with the block, and the Aggies are off and running. Cam Langley drives hard to the hoop to give the Aggies a nice cushion midway through the second half. Amari Hamilton is going to get the dish from Ty Lyons, and he's going to nail a three. He is absolutely focused, more focused than we are. A couple of possessions later, Langley hits Hamilton for three yet again. Later in the second half, we're on the fast break as Pomari Hamilton finds Malik Gantz for the easy lay-in. And now, Mr. Copeland finds Hamilton again from downtown. Amari Hamilton was absolutely on fire. 
That would lead to an eagle time out as Corbett Sports Center was absolutely alive. Later on in the second half, Quay Copeland to Malik Gantz and he draws for the easy basket. On the fast break yet again, Malik Gantz for the and one. Quay Copeland driving hard to the basket and he finds Malik Gantz for the alley-oop. Quay Copeland with the steal and the finish. Malik Gantz playing his last game in Corbett with the shake and bake to the basket. He is absolutely having a blast in his last game. Eve Silla with the block. Next play, Eve Silla with the block yet again. Not in this house. As the Aggies wrap up the regular season 74 to 52 over the Eagles. Unfortunately, the Eagles got revenge on A&T in the semifinals of the MEAC tournament, defeating the Aggies 65-63. The men's team ends their season at 19 and 13. After years of being one of the top track and field programs in the nation, A&T finally has the NCAA national champion, Kayla White, who in February had the fastest indoor 200 meter time in the world this year, ended her phenomenal 2018-2019 indoor track season by holding up the NCAA championship trophy. At the 2019 NCAA Track and Field Indoor Championships in Birmingham, Alabama, White's time of 22.62 seconds broke the world record she set earlier in the season. White also finished second in the 60-meter hurdles, just two-tenths of a second behind the winner. Those two finishes earned Kayla the NCAA Division I Indoor Track Athlete of the Year. She had previously been named the Southeast Region Women's Track Athlete of the Year and the Most Outstanding Track Athlete in the MEAC. White's achievements helped the A&T indoor track team finish tied for 7th nationally, the highest ranking ever for the A&T track program. This is in addition to the MEAC indoor championship that both the men's and women's team won on February 23rd. The track team opens their outdoor season this weekend in a meet hosted by High Point University. The A&T baseball team has a winning record at 10 and 9 at this point in the season, with over 30 games left to play. The Aggies lost two out of three to Marist University last weekend at home. Let's go to Venerable War Memorial Stadium for some highlights from game one of the series with Marist. Jeremiah Foster comes into pitch and strikes out the first Marist batter he faces. But the next Red Fox singles in the eighth Marist run of the game. Foster settles down and retires the rest of the Marist lineup in the sixth. Center fielder Dante Wade camps under this fly ball for the second out of the inning. Then third baseman A.J. Hunt circles under a foul ball down the left field line before making a nice over-the-shoulder catch for the third out of the inning. Foster keeps the momentum going in the top of the seventh. This strikeout ends a scoreless inning. Moving to the top of the eighth, Foster gets a little help from his catcher, Devin Bartley, who tosses his mask and finds the foul ball for the first out of the inning. Later in the inning, Peyton Weinbarger is pitching for the Aggies. He gets a ground ball to second for the second out of the inning. Then Weinbarger gets a strikeout with Bartley, having to throw down to first to record the out. The Aggies finally get their bats going in the bottom of the eighth inning. Bartley sends one down the left field line that he thinks is going foul, but drops inside the line so he has to get it back in gear and slides into second with a double. Dante Wade with a seeing eye ground ball that gets through the infield for a base hit puts runners at the corners. Two outs later, Dustin Baber finds a gap in left center field and he will bring in two more Aggie runs to make the score 8-4. to four. In the top of the ninth, pitcher Leon Davidson gets a little help with a 4-6-3 double play ball to get the Aggies out of a jam.
He'll finish the inning with a strikeout. Bottom of the ninth and the last chance for A&T. AJ Hunt gets things going for the Aggies with a single to left. Jared Norman follows that up with a single left of his own, and the Aggies have a rally started. Two hours later, Wade gets a solid single to right to load up the bases. So this game would come down to Jason King. King gets a good swing on the ball, but right at the left fielder as the Aggies fall 8-4. The Aggies take on crosstown rival UNCG tomorrow night at First National Bank Field, home of the minor league Greensboro Grasshoppers in downtown Greensboro. They will also play NC State at First National Bank Field on March 27th. A&T returns to War Memorial Stadium Friday, March 29th for a three-game series against Savannah State. The softball team has struggled early this season. After losing their first nine games, the team has finally got some wins, but currently stands with a record of 3-15. The Lady Aggies are currently in the middle of a six-game road swing. However, they will be close to home on Wednesday, March 20th, as they will make the 20-mile drive up the I-40 to take on Elon. A&T returns to the Lady Aggies softball complex on Saturday, March 30th, for a doubleheader against Savannah State. The men's tennis team picked up their first win of the season against King University three weeks ago, but that is currently their only win of the season as they stand at 1-12 heading into a home match tomorrow at the Aggie Tennis Complex against Morgan State. The women's team will also compete against Morgan State at the same time tomorrow, still looking for their first win of the season. And finally, kudos go out to a and Athletic Director Earl Hilton, who was named one of four Under Armour Athletic Directors of the Year for FCS institutions. This award was created to honor athletic administrative excellence in a college environment over the past year. In Hilton's eight years as AD, the Aggies have won a combined 26 regular season titles, championship meets, or tournament championship titles, including three of the four celebration bowls that have been played. We'll have more sports next time, including outdoor track and field and spring football. But for now, I'm Megan Wiggins, and that's sports.